All right. Now I'm going to come off on mute, and this is going to happen. You can just watch right here as it's bound to be something <laughs> bizarre. What's going on, guys? Um, <laughs> you, I thought I saw my... It all, Bob? What's that? You, you evidently didn't. I'll let Ronald tell it. So I was like pointing at my cat, which I would thought was right there, and it turned out it was just my shorts ruffled up in the corner. <laughs> I was like, I was like, I, I find it it's odd that she's not, it. she's not breathing, and I was like, oh, yeah, I'm an object. It's not. Just, you call back to your to your cat, April. You I did. That <laughs> and she did, and she was April, in the room, and I was like, April. oh, that's... oh, it's just my dirty drawers. Yeah, he was, was like, watching oh. through the cam, like, cat, cat, listen to me. Yeah. Like, oh shit, that's that's my drawers. Goodness gracious. I mean, it's my shorts, but it's not underwear. But Well, guys, the tweet's out. Go ahead and feel free to share it up. Let everybody know what's going on. I'm going to push us into the proper category for we're Dungeons. We're, we're, we're almost always a full crew. Sans any. And Once dragons. every three sessions. Once every four sessions, yeah. Yeah. I mean, I got two two sessions off. One session on day shifts and one session on night shifts. Then, you know, sometimes midterms happen, but, you know, that happens to all of us. I mean, it does, just usually not when you're already sitting in game. It happens to all of us, except two of us are in school and the rest of us are oh not. Oh my god, that pun. <laughs> Heads have already started to roll. Jesus, man. It's not going to make a difference to people who have never been here, Sniper. It's not a pun. It's informative, you dumb shit. <laughs> what do you want from me? <laughs> I'm just trying to help them now! Wait, did you actually read the tweet? Shit, man, we're not supposed to do that. True enough. And for that, you lose all of your luck rerolls today. I thought we were not supposed to retweet until the game's over. <laughs> no! God damn it, Red. <laughs> Why do I keep you around, man? <laughs> Some good at social media. Mm. Are you though? <laughs> you never no, post you're anything. Not. You just can retweet. You only I don't know retweet. what you're talking about. I have several hundreds of followers. Somewhere. You do? I, fucking Somewhere. God knows why. <laughs> Spread across how many accounts? You guys, you guys don't actually know this. Uh, I own the Lunch account and the uh, and the Wendy's account. It's actually been me this whole time. Oh, mm -hmm. well, that would explain why they've dropped off in it popularity. Me, the Wendy. <laughs> yeah, it me the Wendy. <laughs> Perfect. This is. This I'm gonna is go good. grab a plate. I'll be right back. All right. Well, um, I logged in to find out that they finally shut off all of the uh, the audio. Oh, for uh, we'll be missed for fan bursts. So literally, yeah. like I have like maybe four tracks out of over 100 for this. So it's all dubstep. No, God, no, no. It's uh, <laughs> battle music. Oh, 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 oh. Interestingly oh, enough, oh. I'm surprised that most of the stuff in this particular one is staying. Uh, Probably because it is set most of our stuff up before Fanjoy. Excuse me, before what? Didn't you set up most of our stuff before the uh, the service existed? Fanjoy. Uh, yeah, I don't know what that is. I'm imagining that you mean fan burst, but um, yeah, fan yeah burst. I mean, I did some things, but not um, not a lot of it. Like, a lot of the, the, the background audio itself, the ambiance, was uh, put in from fan burst. Things that have been taken from games and various stuff like that is, is from fan burst. But I've got most of your location-based noises, per se. Like, I've got the blacksmith shop... I've got the cavern echoes. It's not bad. Yeah. Yeah, I've got... What is it? This is cave damp bats. Are the bats damp? I don't know. Oh, we're up on stream. Okay. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> yeah, Ronald has been poking himself in the eyes on stream the whole time. Mm-hmm. Yeah. He's just getting it. I don't know why he's poking. Still. He's just still going. Because I can't see why I love the taste of Cinnamon Toast Crunch. <laughs> That's why you're poking yourself in the <laughs> eyes? The fuck? Yeah. Uh, what's up, SoCal? What's going on, everybody? Welcome in, guys. Hey, Sideshow. Let's see, what is this? This is just... Alright. Enter sporadic dungeon noise here. <laughs> it's always wild to see... <laughs> what's there this is fine so while i'm working on these things why don't we talk about what happened last time okay can we do that yes so we're almost drawing a blank in five seconds okay we got it 
uh, last session, we uh, came we had to the Felsa come a... back, and uh, it was quite a little debacle. I mean, surely it was more than that, right? Like, it, surely there was more no, to so, it than I mean, for, that for the For the most part, um, we ended up uh, essentially reconvening as a group. Yes. We finally solidified more or less our investment in gold uh, for the bathhouse. Um, now that all that's left for us to do is to clear out the vampire menace lurking below for everyone to start work without having them be murdered uh, mm. while trying to work on that place. And it's um, around this point that court lost his shit. Yep. Yes. Because I want my sword. Um, as, uh, we, as, as we were uh, essentially trying to figure out our funds, Ulheim finally sold his holy sword uh, in place of a polished silver mirror and a silver bowl of masterwork quality. Um, using those to scry on the location of not Thelsa directly, but the sword that she had. Upon finding um, her location, they realized that she was just outside the door of the bathhouse. Yeah, she was. What was she doing outside she of the door? She was... Waiting. Waiting. In. Waiting for what, exactly? Do we have any idea? Uh, I think she was just listening in to see if anyone would come out, for the most part. Um, as we, as she started making her way in, Wolheim signaled the rest of the group that she was approaching. As she opened the door, um, they, everyone, um, I guess more or less Wolheim and Thelsa kind of had a bit of a standoff at the uh, within the bathhouse um, realizing that the sword that she was carrying is indeed court's master's sword yeah he asked for her to give it back she refused mm. and this kind of went back and forth a little bit it and, did yeah uh when olheim uh picked that's up when olheim her, decided uh, to uh see what his special eyes can see yeah he went. He went. Uh, he went special elf eyes in dwarven mode and saw the uh, evil aura. Yeah. Just let me have my moment. Just you know the reference. Just let me have my moment. Just fucking keep talking. <laughs> uh, he saw that the uh, the blade itself was coated in uh, a deep evil malice. Um, that he wasn't. He's not sure where it came from because before Port had it. Nothing registered on the weapon. Now yeah, it's a pretty non-evil weapon until you murder an entire innocent family. Weird how that yeah. works. So it now has a, an a usual aura about it, as well as Thelsa carrying the same heavy, uh, thick, evil aura about her. That thick aura. We have with Three two Cs. Extra thick. Um... Where essentially the tensions kind of reached a high point, and Ulheim uh, called upon his his power and smote the the blade. And as he was about to go in for a strike, a unusual portal opened up with uh, raining heads, decapitated heads of uh, Jacobs. Uh, not competition, but people that were uh, inhibiting him. Uh, the Caught order of trouble. the Broken Dawn? The Dawn, yep. the dawn Breakers. Yep. Mm, the Dawn Breakers. Yeah, the people who shanked me. Um, it, the two noticeable heads were the guy that um, stabbed Jacob the first time with the uh, special poison the, the blade and the their captain. Um, yeah. But heads still continued to fall from people of their order. And that's where we left off. That's accurate. Actually, yeah. We missed a little bit from what happened with me during the two weeks you guys were reconvened. And uh, during that time... Oh, Thelsa, yeah. Oh, Thelsa Thelsa apparently did wholesale yeah. slaughter of an entire clan. Thelsa spent the time uh, watching her sister because uh, she was the only one that had witnessed it. And now, since she no longer felt bad about her killing her family, <laughs> uh, she decided to uh, tripod. I feel like watching isn't as accurate as stalking. She, uh, yeah, okay. Yeah, went, she stalked her sister. <laughs> and, uh, she wanted to go in. With the weapon, this was her plan. But uh, 
she realized she was staying in the orphanage and there was no way for her to get in without being spotted by even more people. So uh, Correct. when she was opening the curtain, Elsa cast out her uh, phantasmal killer and uh, oh, the child. split image of me. Oh, well, she was, yeah. So like, probably like a teenager. But, you you yeah. used a move that you murdered a dragon with on what is hey. essentially a teenage girl. If it works, it works, I guess. And uh, yeah, the phantasmal killer pushed her out of the second story window. And uh, as she was falling, she grasped at it and grabbed the curtain rod and fell onto the curtain rod on the ground. And yeah, no, she, she died. He, he least, killed her three least. times with one, <laughs> with one ability. The spell, the fall, and then the fucking curtain. Well, I, I I'm, I'm going to give two of those to gravity. <laughs> yeah. Gonna give two of those to gravity. the person who pushed her off the building. I mean, it, it was a total I mean, final destination moment. Yeah, yeah, it definitely was. There was no getting out of it. Plus, she was just a, a commoner. Um, I, I thought it's certainly worth speaking to the fact that um, her worst nightmare um, was Delsa. Was Delsa. That, yep. that should sort of speak to Delsa's character at this point, which is uh, interesting to say the least. I, um, I'm surprised that more news of that hadn't gone around, um, but that's okay. I mean, you guys, you kind of have all of your own problems to deal with at this point. So that's, it's certainly going to present itself as an issue later, I believe. Um, yeah, I mean, it's not like she murdered her entire family in front of her sister or anything like that. Oh, that, that can't cause Well, it wasn't in front of her. She just walked in after they were all dead. Just to watch you standing over the corpses with a bloody weapon. Yeah. 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 She didn't you know, watch nothing, die. nothing traumatic for a, a young person. It's okay. She doesn't have trauma anymore. <laughs> She's completely cured of all of those fears. That trauma stays impaled on the fence like her lifeless body. <laughs> it's okay. She'll have to but, deal with her asthma and tell her that she, uh, she At the end of all of this. At the at the end of all of us, the worst part of this is where Jacob actually killed someone. Oh, it would, yeah, it was the worst part. How he uh, he got the old man to hang himself. Oh no! Like no, like no, any no. said last week, far it's far worse. Yeah, no, yeah, I, he made him kill himself. Yeah, I just showed them something scary, and now they're with Ferazba, and they're like, I, "God damn, thank God that I don't have to be with that shit anymore." <laughs> I sent them to a place where they don't have to worry about me for now. <laughs> all righty boys and girls looks like no one's going anywhere because it looks like you're going to be shackled to your seats on tonight's shackled city yeah what what he said ronald's yeah. going to be the person who writes all the descriptions from here on now i'm okay with that because i'm the one that does it right now <laughs> go, go on Thanks. use our use our segue go on use our intro yeah We'll no, work on the that. animation. Okay. We'll work on that. This sh this is what's the worst thing that can happen? Am I right? All right, here we go. <laughs> Needs a little workshopping. <clears throat> yeah, it does. I just I never know what to do with you guys, so we'll just kick right into it. Let's just jump right into it. So, inside of the bathhouse, my friends. Felsa, you peer at your allies, the lot across from you. Ulheim, weapon drawn, eyes blazing with divine power. Jacob, quickly crossing a pile of heads. Klaus, what is Klaus doing? I'm curious. Uh, me? I don't know. Me, me. Okay. He just went to the beaker there. Spider. Meep, meep, meep. Quartz. Quartz. Quartz still exhausted in the bedroom, to my understanding. Yeah. I so, like the idea of Will sitting in the corner spinning a web during all of this. He's writing shit out in web. <laughs> <laughs> just slowly making web. Don't mind me, guys. You got now. Yeah, you got that. That's I'm just some feeling pig. compelled to go ahead and write something that's about some a pig. pig. <laughs> Lord, you know it would be about Jacob. Just that's some pig. 
with a picture of Jacob's face in Spiderweb. Jacob's mm -hmm. web. Yep. In addition to all of my other skills when becoming a writer, I became an artiste. Yep. <laughs> There's an extra E on the end. Would it be Jacob's My ass is my brush. Or Jacob's ladder. <laughs> this is bound to be interesting. Needless to say, let's uh, let's fire forth. Felsa, you are seeing opposition from two people that have declared themselves your allies. You've expressed twice now that you wish them no harm. They've declared that they want you to drop the weapon. Jacob sees fit that he charges over, weapon drawn in hand. Even though he was remotely befuddled by a familiar face falling into his hands. Literally falling into his hands. It was not enough to I guess quell the immediate threat, which is you. Um... Ohan's not charging at me, is he? He's just kind of... Not yet, he's not. Nope, right in heads mm, are... Uh, no, I think Alheim actually... Higher. He the... tried to smite the Athame. <clears throat> he did smite it. He declared smite. Um, Then I'm going to look at Jacob as he's running to Mars, and I'm going to point at him. I'm going to say, don't move. Jacob. The compulsion strikes... You're stopped in your tracks. Your muscles will not move forward. There is no will save because there's a binding contract. A devil born contract in blood. You recall which one I'm talking about, right? Yeah, I was there for it. Yeah. You stop, Jacob. She says, don't move. Elheim! What do you uh, do? Seeing raining heads, I mean, my focus was on one thing. Now it's on the uh, mass decapitation that we're looking at. You said it was like countless heads raining down, or was it just like three or four of them? It was probably closer to about a hundred heads. Okay. Uh, are these still coming out? Because... Well, in the in the time span of six seconds, they probably would still be trickling forward, yeah. Mm, and poor Jacob um, is now stuck, frozen under this deluge of skull, you know, deluge of severed heads, probably yeah. getting drenched in blood yet again. While this is why... keeping... Mm. Go ahead. Oh, I was just about to say, this is why he can't afford to go ahead and keep a good repertoire of clothing. He just... I'm, I'm imagining the gory version of the Kingsman ending. <clears throat> but just falling downwards. Um, while I have my uh, Detect Evil still on, I want to do a perception check to see if there's any other outside sources that I'm not currently... that I haven't currently seen, either also the, or the blade. Nothing. So these things are just, like, raining in continuously still? It stops... As I've stated, it will stop. Okay. Um, are any of these heads that I recognize? Depends. Jacob, what did you do with the head that you recognized? Did you drop it? Did you throw it to the side behind you? Did you squeal and scream and panic? What did you do? No, I basically just tossed it to the right. Okay. Well, you're right next to a wall. It's like, like a wet color. paper towel. Yeah, I mean, he just went ahead and tossed it aside because he was more interested in getting to Thelsa, preferably before she decided to enact the contract. Cause Quite literally, the right side of your body is about a foot away from a wall. Not sure if you ever played wall ball before. This is not quite as rubbery. But in this distance, in your panicked moment, while clutching on a weapon, it's not just going to pancake splatter. Um, it's going to no, have a little bounce back. He threw I mean, it just out of the way. That's it. Okay. To the Can right, to the left, the, overhead. The bathhouse map? I, I, Maybe he dribbled it. I don't know. You should throw it back Cross to the portal and see what angles. happens. Jacob, this Problem. is your story. I need you to tell me. Not that you don't know. I just want you to tell me. You drop it at mm. your feet. If you heave it to the right... It's going to have an action. If you heave it to the left, there's going to be an action. 
if you decide to hookshot it out the door, I'm going to take an action. Uh, as he was running through the deluge and raised his you know, weapon-bearing arm to try and shield off the most, he caught the uh, familiar head. Okay. And chucked it over his left shoulder. Okay. All right, so you just... You've gone like so, just right over the shoulder. Um, it's reason to believe we'll take a 33% chance here. Alheim, uh, call mm -hmm. 33% in your favor. Give me 33% range. 1 to 33. 8. Definitely yeah. It two. rolls in your direction. Yeah, it shows 2, but it rolled an 8 stat-wise on, on the die, so... Just don't trust... Don't trust... Um. The head rolls into the pool nearest you. I'll walk over and pick it up. Because this is... This is... Fucking crazy. Okay. Damn, I should have thrown it at her. <laughs> when you pick up the head from the ground, you immediately recognize this person. Conversations were brief but you do recognize them. Face stuck in horror. Malignance streaks across. The neck has been tore. Not severed, not guillotined, not by a blade. No, it's just been tore off. The flesh and rivets. Um, he, he looks up and he starts looking around. What... What sorcery is this? By the heavens, what sorcery? Thelsa, any Jacob, kind of... any response? I, I got no answer, so I'd just kind of be watching as more heads just kind of trickle. Mm. As for Jacob's response, given that he's pretty much, you know, locked down. <laughs> that's it. Well, I'm all, uh, look up at Thelsa. You see him put his hand out, and it, um, as he starts closing his hand, you see the, um, the golden form that the gauntlet's been taking, it kind of it recondenses into the silver platinum color, and uh, the gem goes back to being gold. So he cuts off the smite ability. Okay. The moment that you do this, Thelsa, you feel like your presence is no longer under immediate cause concern of attack. Um, you get that sensation particularly at your side. You don't know why. Up to no point has it expressed itself as a viable living construct, but it's not rendering any any feelings any further. Before it was kind of like raising your hackles, you know, you're when when an animal gets scared, that kind of thing. But now it's not the case. Now Jacob stands in his whatever stance he's happens to be in. I'm imagining the weapon is drawn over shoulder. Uh, in preparation to to attack, but you've ushered him to stand still. Now Olheim drops this this smite, the declaration of damage to your weapon. Klaus, anything? Um, I mean, just to be safe, I'm gonna throw out a protection from evil on myself. Sure, because uh, this shit seems pretty evil. It does feel that way, yeah. Spell wards a creature from attacks by evil creatures from mental control and from summoned creatures. It creates magical barrier. Uh, you essentially get a plus two deflection bonus to AC and a plus two resistance on saves. So I would have to bas basically break um, in addition to whatever it is that's around you. Yeah. Not a problem. Um, still kind of shocked just by what he's looking at. Ulheim just kind of slowly looks up at her. Is this some phantasm of yours? some illusion what, whatever this is isn't mine I've never seen uh, most of these people 
any of these people. Looks over to Klaus. I... Do you think I did this? I, I don't understand. Why are you looking at me? It's racist against spiders. Knew it. I'm not calling Omar. for accusation. I'm not pointing you out for accusation. I'm just trying to figure out what... I'm trying to figure out what I'm looking at. Oh, that goes for myself as well. Um, however, Delsa may not be doing this herself, but she's surrounded with a different kind of energy now. It is possible that whatever's controlling her is influencing things around her. I'm just going to kind of look befuddled for a second. C controlling me? I'm not being compelled right now. I was some time ago, but even I know who that was, and this isn't their act. That's what a compelled person would say. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> um, he kind of... I, I want to do his upper... Uh, I guess, uh... Sense motive? See if she's telling the truth? Sure. I don't know if I can see through something like that, but... 35? Yeah, you don't... You never had really a reason to disbelieve her, as is, but... Um, for what it's worth... You have... I, nothing that kind of triggers, right? Like, you don't have yeah. any red flags that... That go up, but you do know that something is off. Maybe it's this newfound darkness that surrounds Delsa. Delsa was dark before. This is different. Um. Well, Heim kind of looks over to the group. I don't know what this is. I don't know why he came here. We need to get rid of it. I agree. Give him a, give him a proper burial. Um, least... Can I throw a uh, knowledge can out at this? To see if it's something that I would have heard of before? In any instance? What exactly are you trying to... Well, what's your target? I'm curious. The uh, <clears throat> the reigning heads, or, or I guess the portal that the, head, the heads are coming from in particular. Sure. sure. Um, trying to discern origin or anything of that nature. Wow, that's in that one. That's fine. I mean, you don't innately fail checks, right? Like, that's not... No, but it still sucks. It still sucks. You're right. Um, So, this this type of magic is not... It's not unfamiliar to you. In fact, recently you've used it quite a few times. Um, You are aware, as a caster, I'm sure Thelsa is aware as well, that magic is stained and it is tainted by the user. Everyone has their own brand of magic, things that they bring to the arcane spectrum and pool. Even the intricate woven knots of enchantment and evocation seem to drum up um, their very own style. It's unique to the person. And you feel like you recognize it, Klaus. It feels familiar, all too familiar. You've used this kind of portal before. Mm. Mm. Jacob's just going to continue holding his pose. Sure. Alheim, Klaus, you can see that Jacob stands stoically, almost like he has been carved or whittled into marble. It's Jacob, what are you... strange, because the way that his body is, is kind of holding itself right now, it he should have toppled what? over at this point. Yeah. Jacob, what are you doing? And he kind of goes over to... Like, kind of shake him. Jacob! Jacob! Mm. And he's just going to uh, glare daggers... <clears throat> at the... Uh, at Thelsa. The reason for his current cramp state. When I see him kind of, like, darting back and forth... Yes, what you can that? see his, his brow tighten, um, the lines decorating his face. It seems to eagerly, with malaise, be poured over Thelsa, yes. Holheim will turn back over to her. Release him. I'm going to look over at him and I'm going to wave my hand. I'm going to say, you can go now. 
Just don't attack. And with a fierce exhalation, he'll just kind of buckle over, leaning on his sword. He'll keep him propped up just like that. You okay? Oh, that was such a bad cramp. Oh, my back. Oh. Do either of you mind telling me what this contract business is about? Was that openly stated yet? No, not yet. Okay, I don't. I don't, I don't that was that was my me. Mistake. Yeah, that was me. Gotcha. Yeah, Jacob's not allowed to speak about the contract. Correct. Um, understood. I mean, seeing Apparently as there's the there's a a mountain of heads, uh, Olheim's gonna get a wheelbarrow or giant box, and he's gonna start taking. Well, the isn't there and... still a giant hole in the floor from where the? Yeah, but I'm not gonna just roll them. I'm not gonna just roll them down there. I, I'm gonna take them to properly get married. Olheim head collector. Um. But yeah, I'll take if I don't know if you're cool with it. Can you do the Drekthar's way map uh, for me, please? Just so I can show you where I want to bury him. Sure. Let's see if I still have that um, unarchived. All I'm imagining is is we deal with this the way we last dealt with a cart full of bodies, which is kick it down the center of Main Street, light it on fire, and you... gets it on fire and rolls down the street, mm -hmm. and so... launch it into the lake. Or no, better yet, better yet, he gets them all in the cart and he's rolling them down and it starts rolling away and he's like, my heads. He'll he'll My start cabbages. burying the heads here if you can see it. I'd believe a head vendor in shackled, to be honest. He'll he'll take them down there and he'll he'll bury them in like this corner kind of thing and keep that area. Okay, he'll so put, not he'll, not too far then. Yeah, no, uh, he's not going to go all the way over there, but um, he's he's going to bury them right here and he if he has time with whatever loose uh, sticks and stuff, he'll make uh, miniature monuments of stone and and sticks for each of the heads. Mm. And like Will did earlier, um, Jacob's going to try and ascertain the source of the uh, portal because he does understand that there's usually some kind of residual trace to the caster. Sure. Like a signature to it. So let's see. That would be Knowledge Arcana. Hopefully I don't suck as bad as he did. Yeah, you you are also a very well aware that, that magic itself has its own like stains or taints to it, and you kind of recognize this. This uh this is something that you guys have recently gone through and used. Um and it's something that just kind of sticks into your memory. Do you have any recollection, Jacob? Oh, well, the one that's immediately jumping to mind is the last you know, the last time he was portal hopped was when he got his new leg. And the fact that he's seeing all these heads, he's trying to see if this is a familiar stank on that magic. If he knows, you think the likely chance. I'm assuming that you think that it's it's your father. Yeah, because you know the whole beheading thing. Sure, and from the recent experiences of dealing with Navatorin, no, it isn't. Oh damn, that would have been convenient. Uh, Abby Kins can only be behind so much. Well, the only other portal that he can think of would be the one that was ripped in the Temple of Weejas, but rather, you know, but that wouldn't be ultra familiar to him, I don't think. Especially given the uh, who accidental. Here can, who here can can use uh, detect magic? Gord can. Oh, I can. If you can, um, I'm, I think I'm the only one who can. All right, so everyone that can, give me a wisdom. Be twenty plus your wisdom mod. Hey, wow! At twenty, I set it the DC at twenty. Actually, I set the DC at twenty. Very good. Um, Jacob, you are the only person that recalls this after further inspection on the line of magic itself, looking at the weave, you do recognize it. It's something that's minor. It was unique to this person. Maybe it's the way that this portal moves, the way that it's coated in, in something a bit more abstract. It's definitely not from the mundane material plane. 
This looks like Korofan's magic. Korofan. Korofan, the one who led us to us. Yeah. yeah. That's the one. Mm. Uh, yeah, looking at the weave and the warp of the magics overhead as they're dissipating and wisping away. He's immediately going to uh, look to Klaus and Korofan. That's where I've seen it before. When we were sent to Occipitus, that's exactly what it looked like. Do you believe this massacre to be Korofan's doing? Whether it's his doing or not, I can't say. I can say that that was made by him. Understood. It I'm seems certain. We, it seems we must find Korofan once more. Do we happen to have any of his stones anymore? I think you guys ended up running out of his his stones. Yeah, because we used the last one to, to get home. On top of that, I believe that most of those... Yeah, no, that you you guys end up using the rest of those. Yeah, I was gonna say I think one. I think Klaus had lost most of those mundane belongings. He went and grabbed everything that was immediately like powerful, powerfully magical. Yeah. Uh, but anything that was mundane was just kind of left. But no, it's um, I believe you guys used the rest of those. Yeah, that's um, why Jacob was asking Klaus because Klaus is the hoarder. You know, little teenage hoarder of the group. I don't believe I have any anymore, but. I'm sure there's some other way to locate him. Well, I'm certain there is. And at that point, he's going to thumb over to uh, Alheim, the gentleman who just went out and bought a scrying mirror. I was hoping that we still had one of his stones so that we could go ahead and better trace him. And then he'll kind of look over the skulls and go, we could try using one of, you know, one of these heads, but... We will not defile these bodies any more than they have been. And I will not use one as a conduit to search for their location. So you'd rather let their murderer go free? Now, Jacob, uh, Klaus as well, Thelsa, Alheim, if you guys have access to Spellcraft, uh, go ahead and do that for me. And that's a net one. Yep, I I, I'm, I'm on fire tonight. So I'm gonna let you, you use your first one. That makes sense. Um, the, I set the DC at uh, 25 or higher. So Klaus and Thelsa, you will both be aware and know that um, scrying, while it's great for getting information, it also um, for for very well capable users they also can feel that pull back on themselves. They realize they're getting watched. Not all of them are keen to realize that it's a divination. It's sort of the feeling like, I feel like I'm fucking being watched right now. Like, you get that, that ear burning when someone's talking about you. A smart spellcaster knows when it happens. And he wasn't an idiot. Regardless, it would be best not to scry his location. We I believe we must find him of other methods if we are to take him by surprise. He gives him a he gives Klaus a nod. He continues cleaning up the heads, moving them to the uh, the grave spot that uh, I pointed out already. Um, I'm just picturing Allheim with a broom and and dustpan, just like chasing these bowling ball size um, heads. Yeah, I'm imagining uh, him every time up like Grandpa from Jackie Chan. Hey, ah. Uh... He'll, he'll pick up, I mean, five or ten at a time for whatever bucket or whatever he can, and individually he'll start burying them, giving them a small prayer. Um, I'm not sure, I, I mean, he's not sure if every one of them is part of the Order of the Dawnbreakers, um, but that's the symbol he kind of etches onto their, their tombstones as a representation of giving them that final respect. Yeah, because that's exactly, a, that's a symbol I want to see over and over. I mean, it's their beliefs. I'm not. Yeah, yeah, not but still, to, yeah. Jacob would be helping Olheim out, and 
at least uh, scratching out the symbols on stones. Displeased by it, but, you know, he, he gets the deal. Okay. Um, as he's doing this, you uh, kind of see like a golden drop run from the face of Olheim, and he kind of just picks it up like this, and he rubs it in his hands, and he drops it to the floor. Does everybody see that? Who? who? I mean, whoever's helping me, I guess, dig the grave, and if they're Probably paying attention, Jacob. they're not. Okay. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, I, I'm. I'm going to be focusing on uh, you know the new body that our our other spellcaster has taken, and I, I'm kind of in. Oh no! Don't ship it! Don't ship it! <laughs> oh no, that's not my intent. No, that was more for the chat, because you know Christy just blew a blood vessel in her nose. I hope not. Me too. That sucks. <laughs> I freaking hope not. Uh, but yeah, seeing the golden drop, Jacob's going to pause in his, uh, scratching of the symbol, um, with his work knife and kind of give Alheim a once over, you're leaking. It appears so. Is this more of that thing having to do with whatever we went to the plane of fire for no I, I don't believe so uh, okay well as a friend generally when my friends pop strange leaks we try to figure out the why behind it Granted, that's definitely not what I'm used to seeing coming out of my friends, but... I think... I think I'm just tired. Not physically, but... Tired of walking so far and... Not, not making a difference. Of having to do all this apologizing and and bearing and consoling and not being able to give give back to those who have who've more than earned it. Well, Alheim. I'll say this much. Speaking as somebody who is not even half the honorable cuss you are, I would point out that you're the one who's choosing to walk this particular path. If you're getting weary, isn't that just an indication that you're on the right one? I mean, speaking as somebody who's spent their entire life taking the easy way. Maybe. I, I don't know, but... You know, keep in mind that at any time, you can certainly go ahead and say to hell with it all and just let everything fly to the wayside like dross. But if you did, you wouldn't be you. I just gives him a low nod and looks back at him. Hmm. So, have you got any idea why somebody would think to behead all of my fan club? Show of probably appreciation. Don't know. <laughs> well, who do we know that would show appreciation to any of us? We haven't been making friends at every turn. Jerry. In fact, oh. 
Yeah, I rather doubt Jared's going to open an interdimensional portal. Look, you don't him. know what happens, man. You're not him anymore. Maybe he decided to pick up magic. Jared has gone through quite a few interdimensional He's portals. He's had quite a shitty week. Maybe he said fuck it and threw his body to the arcane. <laughs> Maybe he went out like the old man. We haven't been to his house in a while. <laughs> And just putting out the sound of stupidity in his in the back of his mind. You know. Well, I, I can't think of anyone off the top of my head who would be willing to uh, give us any favors like that. And last I checked, uh, they were intending to come back to investigate. After hearing about everything going on with uh, Big Nettie, you know, Big Daddy Nabby. That's probably the link then. I don't know if Nab the Doran would necessarily care about this horde of people hell bent on my death. If he was, he'd have stepped in well before I caught that blade in my ribs. No, it just it just makes it just doesn't make sense. What's weird to me is how nobody bats an eye at the fact that Jacob still refers to Navatorin as Big Daddy Nab. Big Daddy Nabikins. Not not even the slightest like I bat at it. It's just and this no, time, no, because he he said it enough by now. They're just like, yeah, it's pretty fucked up. But you're just not paying attention, man. We're over here fucking shaming him. Un until he Quietly. until he full on says like Nabi Kun, I I won't bat an eye. <laughs> Nabi Senpai. <laughs> Once he starts using Japanese honorifics, then I'm going to start being disappointed. Until then, he's fine. God, and then man. Nabi ne leans down for a head pat and goes, "Oh, my little Jacob bow." Navi Senpai, all I wanted was your head pats this whole time. You just gave me heads and no pats. <laughs> I'm gonna retire. Are we finally enough to make you quit? I want I, I wish I could just join Will in his living room right now. I wanna join Will in his bedroom. We're technically in his bedroom, at least in the camera. Yeah, technically. <laughs> there are no cameras in the bedroom when we're there together. Uh -oh. uh, I I need I actually I need Klaus for this, okay? This is some of these things are important to his character, or at least he's the understanding of the game. Please don't fucking alcohol. scare him away. He no, he's got alcohol. Up. Yeah, it's time. <laughs> he needed the tequila to deal with our shit. <laughs> Can you blame him? It's one of those nights. <laughs> you mean it's just Wednesday. It's not one of those nights. It's just <laughs> Wednesday. It's one of the Wednesdays. I, I just think it's, it's funny night. that everyone's taking exception to the idea of Jacob, who has repeatedly made shorthand names and called people by the wrong name or just completely forgotten it, are, are really all that shocked by him just shortening it out to Big, Big Daddy Nabby. Nabba Torrent is shorter than Big Daddy Nabby. <laughs> He's shortening it though, though. But for those people who, you know... It's literally a syllable more for what you're saying. No! There's no argument here. You fuck. Yeah, but when, it's like adding shortener to coffee it doesn't actually make it any less. It adds more to... Listen, this isn't the lamp to lampshade scenario. His argument is false. It doesn't fucking work. Well, sort of like how he calls Klaus old man, even though Klaus is a lot shorter. It's just the way he talks. What does height have to deal with age? Fuck. No, 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 that, that was beyond me. I'm sorry for anyone who's below 5'4 in the chat. Rip your child. Yeah, no. Nope. Rip your childhood. <laughs> You have oh to my god, it. just let me go ahead. Do not ruin my immersion. This this is a 5.8 and up allowed server. It's too mature for anyone below 5.8. Just gotta get that good pop in there. <laughs> right, time for me to One of those fucking nights, man. 
Oh, you just had to go ahead and break out the tequila? No, Courier, yeah. I Christy, am not. I didn't make the rule. But That's according true. to Sniper Courier, at your height, you're at least 74 years old. <laughs> what? Wait, so, shit, how, how old are we then, bud? How, how, whoa, 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 whoa. How did height come into... You just <laughs> said that! Those are the know. fucking words out of your no. mouth! No, 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 you, I understood you, what he meant. He said, he said Klaus is shorter, as in the name Klaus is shorter than old man Klaus. It was still stupid, and I still thought immediately that it was about height, but yeah. he meant yeah. syllable-wise. The, way the hell would height have anything to do Klaus, with it? That's what we've been confused shorter. about. Because you're confusing. Your logic I've is never, wrong. You're fallible. Also, Your blood is thin. You will not survive the fucking winter. The midget, I do not want to hear a damn thing from the midget brigade, okay? Quiet chat. <laughs> yeah, should I just realize most of us are over six feet? Or I'll go oh, ahead and put on my shin guards. Ronald, or, or no, Ronald's the one. I don't, who is I don't know how, old, how tall Ronald is. I almost said how old Ronald is. God damn, it's rubbing off on me. I'm 5'9". I'm yeah. Ron, yeah, Ron's I don't think any of us are under, you know, are, are that much under six feet. Right. That would. <sighs> oh, God. And the, lo the lollipop guild are going off right now. Okay. All right. Let's, let's bring it back in. Let's, let's bring it back in. Everyone mm. put your drama mask back on. All right. Uh... <laughs> you were uh, rounding out your, uh, your sentence. <laughs> I'll ban you, sniper. Don't try it. Just because you have the high ground doesn't mean I won't punch your dick. <laughs> yeah, worked for Anakin too. Oh man, Skywalker. God, he, he ended up with not much more than a dick, though. <clears throat> oh, all right. This is fine. Yeah. Um, As I was saying, though, I just don't see where Nab the Torn would step in now on this particular group, especially since we weren't even aware of them. So who could possibly have the motivation to take them out, knowing that they would likely be coming for me? I don't know. I mean, last I checked, the only people who are seemingly interested in keeping me alive are... Well, at least three of you. Look, let's just uh, let's get this finished up. Got some, got some work to take care of, and I don't know if you noticed yet, but and he kind of pulls out the paperwork for the uh, for the bathhouse and stuff. I uh, got everything set up, so. Oh, fantastic. Now, what are we going to be doing about the whole evil vampire demon baby epidemic that we have going on? Just wanted to wonder, that's what I wanted to bring up. Probably going to be putting some work in. Some work in. How many did you guys come across down here? I, I think you used... Triple digits. Yeah. You know, hundreds. Possibly thousands. I, I don't think this is this is going to be considered a little work. I think you're talking about a crusade. And now the only person that we know who likely could have provided some kind of manpower is probably looking at me for murder. Just saying. Well, I'm just kind of stands up after he's finished with the uh, the heads and stuff, and uh, walks back up. You guys are ridiculous, okay. by the way. I need to go ahead. I'm like, I'm like looking at, like, like half looking at chat, half look, like listening to the, the game, and I can see you guys. You guys are fucking ridiculous. Wait. <laughs> what the fuck is this? God damn it, Will. <laughs> oh, shit. What is everyone Ugh. losing their 
their shit over. Oh, oh you didn't even see it yet, did you? Yeah. <laughs> see what? <laughs> Just look at what Will posted last. Oh shit. <laughs> posted last where? In chat. Uh, Twitch chat. <laughs> Something about smooth hole. <laughs> <laughs> Well, you're ah! having your serious conversation, that's what was typed out. And all of us lost our <laughs> shit while you were having a serious moment. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, well, yeah. my, Sorry. Minor correction, it was smooth bore. But, uh, yeah, that, oh that was, uh, you're, you're that, was my, that was my segment, and uh, it's one of your guys' turns. Yeah. Quartz crying, don't mind that. <laughs> Any, did you fucking really? <laughs> yeah, I definitely fell straight back. I saw back you standing up, but I didn't realize you fell. <laughs> oh god, I need to see a clip of that. I leaned back a little bit too far. Oh my god. <laughs> yeah, I really need to see a clip of that. Hello? There we go. Hi, Bob. Sorry, I, I muted myself uh, enough times that it stopped registering my microphone. <laughs> <laughs> Much appreciated for you all, you know, going ahead and pulling back and just <laughs> absolutely losing your shit in the background while me and Olheimer trying to have this serious moment of roleplay. Hey, miss, it's not I like you haven't done this before. You've practiced for this. I'm better. I'm uh, I'm good. I needed that laugh. I'm Thank you. Not. <laughs> I definitely needed that. That was uh Ooh. That was oh, good. Thank shit. you. I'm I'm glad to be the butt of your joke. Man, that's that's topical. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. But of something, all right. <laughs> oh, all those years that the glory hole finally paid off. Um, I'm pretty I, sure that's the name of one of the venues around here. <laughs> I'm not. I'm not gonna say anything. God damn it. Okay. Oh God. <clears throat> all right. So Klaus. Yep. There's only so long you can you can stand there. Um, I'm curious what what are you what are you doing? What what are you th are you reading something? Are you taking? No, I'm gonna grill the fuck out of Thelsa. Get it. Let's let's I, hear it. I need to know. Hey, Pat, why'd you kill your fucking family? Camera pans. I'll be Camera looking over his spider legs. legs. This is just an entire shot, reverse shot, uh, scene for the next 20 minutes. I, honestly, so, like, uh, jokes aside, it was a good roleplay. It was. The part that I could hear. Yeah, I missed most of it. I couldn't hear over my own laughing. <laughs> Only the ending part is what I missed. I got it all. Thelsa, I... I need to know. You said you were compelled before, but you're not now. What's happened to you? Um, a lot has happened. What do you see That's... different? You've got, uh, you can read magic, you can detect magic. Well, what can you tell? I can clearly see that you're not the same as when I saw you last as well. That's more so on the physical side than anything else, but you... Your aura is different. Your air. Magic kind of odd, I, I can see that. It's tainted, more so than before. Yes, I, uh, I wouldn't doubt that. I, uh, I've changed a bit. That I won't argue. Is this as a result of your compulsion, or how, how did this come to be? I wouldn't say it was just the compulsion, but it definitely helped. A lot of things have happened over the past couple of days that have led me to where I am. Past couple of days being past couple of weeks. And but, uh, where exactly is that? All in town. I haven't gone anywhere. I don't mean physically. I fear you're going down a path that none of us can follow that you'll be lost in time is it your goal to follow me it's my goal to make sure we stay together 
I'm not going anywhere. Not until I need to leave. And if your friends, because you seem a little bit, uh, well, not not engaging in combat immediately. But if they keep doing that, I mean, I won't have much reason to stay. I hesitate to strike down friends. I'm glad you still see me as a friend. For the time being. I don't plan on changing it. All right, then. Do you believe your motivations are different? That you stay with us for a different reason now? Are we a means to your end? I, I do. I do believe I have a different reason. I believe that I have a purpose now. You I'm did not before? Not particularly. It was just getting away at first. Growing stronger and living out my life. And now I have a reason to do what I do. You said before that you don't regret what you did. Do you stand by that? I stand by that. If you understood what my life was like with my family before I left them, the reason I left to join you guys was because of them. I gathered that much when I first met you. I didn't realize it had been quite that bad to warrant the killing of I, innocent children. I don't know that I would have done it myself. But had it been done prior to my compulsion, it wouldn't have upset me. Do you believe that this compulsion will happen again? That you'll be helped along, so to speak, in the future? I believe I'm more powerful now. And I believe it'll make some changes in, in our future. I can't say if there'll be benefit or... I think it'll have its ups and downs. But For your sake, you'd, you'd better hope that it's not a detriment. More ups than downs is what I can hope for. Friend or not, you... You can't do things like that. Like no matter what? what they did to you. At least not while you're with us. I don't plan on murdering people without reason. Do you feel driven to find out who compelled you and why? I know. Prevent it from happening me. in the future? Who would that be? It's the person I serve now. And who would that be? Well, when you become someone who makes an image, you are sought. And I was sought by Weejas. She brought me back when I was in her temple. That's the only reason I'm here. I was dead for who knows how long. And uh, when I awoke, it was post-fight. And they were all dead. I remembered it, but it was still unlike me to walk into my own home and see that my family was murdered. At the time, I wasn't comfortable. I was scared. And I returned here because I had nowhere else to go, really. My real home was where I would be most away from. And uh, I was consulted by Weejoss herself. And she asked me to be her champion. And she brought me back. I figured I'd owe her something. I'm not against the way she sees the world. Those that die should stay dead. Where... Where does this put you in the ordeal we have with the Church of Weejoss in this town? Where do you stand on the matter? If they're not worth living, then they don't deserve to live, but... Surely your god has something to say about her followers being murdered. I'm sure she's not very happy about it. But she knows who I am, and she knows that I'm not about to start fighting my own allies, even if they do stand against her own rule. I still don't know how to feel about... My concern is I don't know who your allies are at this point. You claim to be with us, but truly your allegiance is to her, then theirs is as well. It's not entirely true. I'm a champion. I'm not a follower. 
I'm not, well, I say as if I can't fall out of her league. I do her bidding on Earth, and I am my own person. If I choose to do something, it will represent her image, but that just means she's going to have to deal with it. Come down and smite me if that's what she wants. But in any case, I'm not opposed to working against someone I am not a fan of to defeat an evil that's greater than said person. Then you'll stand with us against Ike? Of course. Frankly, that's all I needed to hear right now. I don't believe Ike is worth what he seems to be. I don't think he deserves to be under my deity's aid. I just believe he should be smitten and smote, smote down. Not smitten. I mean, it wouldn't be too hard, though. Nevertheless, <laughs> I believe he should be eliminated. Then I suppose you are welcome to continue along with us for the time being. Things are dynamic now, more so than they were before. And frankly, we'll all be keeping a close eye on you, I'm sure. It's true. Now you can't just walk through the town and be in awe by everybody. Now you're an enemy than a family. Which, I must say, I prefer this body. Frankly, in some circles, we were already enemies. It's not going to be that different. Yeah, yeah, I guess that's fair. There's not much left in this town anyways. There's enough. Enough worth fighting for. I wouldn't say there wasn't enough worth fighting for. I'd say that there's enough that... Uh, a drider in town will be a concern, but less so than churches burning, people being decapitated. Just gonna look over at Alheim and uh, Jacob as they're hauling head. I certainly agree with you there, but the people of this town have grown accustomed to uh, strange creatures roaming the streets. Uh, maybe not as much as they should, but enough. I'll be okay. Oh, and the dragon. She's just got to kind of look towards the door. Yeah, I didn't, I didn't see that one coming. There is the matter of the dragon, but hopefully for a later date. Hopefully. We should get on with it then. We have some cleaning to do around here before we move forward. Um, yeah, I was going to say that it looked cleaner in here when I got here, but... That was before I got uh, interrupted with my conversation. Klaus, you had some previous questions about the weapon, or am I mistaken? Uh, about the weapon, as in the sword that Thels is carrying, or... Yeah. Uh, I don't remember if I did. Okay. Okay. That's fair. Anything else you wish to share? No, I'm good. Felsa, from you? Oh, I would kind of just be looking over the, the carapace, because it's weird to see a spider. Well, a spider this size. Sure. I don't believe I've ever seen a drider before. Um, Felsa, you... You have come to realize that... This is most of your party. This is most of your crew. Court hasn't been seen yet. He is nowhere around. Do you say or do anything about that, or do you just kind of accept it? Um, I think it was for the best at the moment, at least. Because of the whole sword deal, I'd like to deal with that as late as possible. And, uh... Yeah, you know, I'm, I'm not gonna just. I'm not sure if he's dead or not, so I'm not gonna ask because I feel like, I don't know, bringing up a more bad mood when heads are falling from the sky is not the best uh, choice. In case he had passed. Okay. Okay. So, is there any additional conversation that you feel like needs to be had? Um, Allheim, Jacob, did you wish to speak to Thelsa or Klaus further? 
Uh, I would probably wait till late at night when everyone's asleep. Yeah, I don't think you I guys would... are going to go to sleep. I just don't think that that's the case in this situation. Um, okay. It's just um, not really believable. You see a target of evil that has a malignant evil weapon on their side. Uh, Jacob has lost all control when fighting the challenge. Yeah, you just don't really think it's possible. Um, one, one moment, guys. Yeah. I'm just going to clear it up. Toasty, you say stacking a new beanie. I have about seven beanies. I can just switch through them every hour we play. Yeah, I got you. I got a better beanie than all of yours, though. Hey, oh. I don't own one, so I feel left out. You Don't worry, you have a hat. No, I don't. It's in I'm your hand. You. Tripod. Yeah, tripod. It's, it's all tripod. See, you got your hat. <laughs> hold, wait, hold on, Innie. I have one thing to rival that. Quad pod? Is it your fucking chopper hat? It's actually a bipod, and to balance it on his head is even harder. <laughs> let, me, let me go. Let me go. Oh, I have God. three options, Any. If I do it. <laughs> That's the most cat in the hat looking motherfucking <laughs> Uncle Sam hat that I've ever seen. <laughs> um. But. Yeah, yeah. Uh, after I'm done pulling, putting the the heads to rest and giving them their their last rites to curious. Whatever deity they... You you said that you wanted to take them down there to bury them. Do you realize the kind of of uh, excavation that's going to be required to bury 100 heads? This isn't exactly like eight heads yeah, in a duffel bag. Now this is a lot of fucking human remains. Yeah, I, yeah that's what I'm saying. I'm, I'm doing this because I don't have to sleep, so I, I'm working consistently to get this done. Okay, um, Jacob, will you be assisting? Yeah, that's the whole. That was when the whole conversation we had was taking place. All right. Well, that conversation is just an iota of the amount of time that's going to be needed, yeah. especially if you're going to do like last rites. <clears throat> um. Uh, Jacob would go ahead and help out for a couple hours, and then he'd probably get bored and go upstairs and go back to take a nap because, well, there's not much else to do when you're on the lam. Sure. Um, but yeah, while well, that's while well, Olheim's going back and forth uh, with that, uh, he'll walk up to Klaus and Thalsa. Klaus, go go get some rest if you're feeling tired. I need to have a word with her. As long as you don't take your eyes off her. It's the only way I'll sleep comfortably. How could you take your eyes off me? Shut up. You say that in game as well? Yeah, yes. that, that's, that's just to any, not to. Because that sounded know. very, very will there, not Klaus. <laughs> Look, there's a blending of the lines. <laughs> yeah. okay. Remember, Bob, every character is just part of you. It's true. It's true. That just, part was um, definitely the will part. <laughs> I just figured Klaus would be like, calm your whorish evil mouth. <laughs> but no, you're. Shut up. Klaus is many things, but he's not a misogynist, okay? You make him run however you want. <laughs> okay. Okay. Silent charlatan. Yeah, he doesn't kink um, shame like that. But yeah, as as he's still uh, picking up heads and continuing with the burial process, he'll uh, he'll motion for Thalsa to follow him. Do you follow? I'll come with, but I don't really want to handle those. No, but gross. You don't want to do what? Handle the heads. Oh, I'm not asking you to help. I'm just. I'm I'm picking up the heads and doing that stuff on my own. Okay, and I just kind of walk with you. How do you walk? I'm curious. Do you just walk um, normally, like as delicate as you were, or do you move uh, with caution? I'd probably walk behind him at all times, but other than that, I'm not. Uh, I'm not. Uh, walking any different, just kind of keeping an eye on him, even though I'm pretty sure he'd want to do this. Um, so as they kind of get down to like the, the middle part of the uh, um, I guess the tunnel that was made just before they start entering the little catacombs area 
Uh, Ulheim just kind of turns over real quick. What power do you have over him? I don't know what extent the power is, but when I got these, I'm going to gesture towards my horns and the uh, facial and body plates that I've got. I inherited some power over some things in the demon scar, from what I understand. And of those things, Jared is one. Jacob is one. And what are your goals with him? What plan I have no do you goals. have for him? He is his own man. He can do as he pleases. As long as it's not attacking me. Gives her just kind of gives her a nod. He's not actually he's not looking at her uh, while he's having this conversation. He, his main focus is uh, kind of digging, placing the heads uh, and stuff. And who do you align yourself with? Well, I am a champion of Weejas now. I suppose there's no use hiding any of my past from you, few anymore. I was not a champion of Weejas until just recently when she brought me back. She saw that I died in her temple and she saw fit to make me her champion or bring me at least to prove myself even further. And your reason for keeping the blade? Because he's a shit fuck. It's my show of devotion for my day. It's a present from her. I'm not about to cast that away just because a poor boy thinks it's his only tie to a city that's dead. Whether that's memory or whether that's just the way he sees it it's just a blade and it's not going to make any difference well i'm kind of stops doesn't really look at still not looking at her kind of just nods plus with the air it's got i don't know if he would want it so much anyways it's supposed to be his symbol of righteousness and of the light that his his city shone down, and well, it's definitely not that anymore. Then, if you are a champion to a higher power, then all I can say is, as long as you don't cause any harm between me. Or the ones I protect. You will have nothing to fear. <laughs> I wouldn't be scared anyways, though. I do not wish any harm upon you. I am not sure how to feel about you specifically. The others, they, they cause no real meaning to me. But... Weejoss is against things coming back from the dead, and... Despite Klaus coming back, it's different. He's never died. He just kind of enters his own form and then swaps from body to body. You, on the other hand, you pass and are returned. And I don't know we just stance, but I'm not going to smite you down just because you're against one of her beliefs. And if she chose me as a champion, she will understand that as well. There's your guys' first luck re-roll of the night. Thanks so much, combat. I appreciate that, buddy. <clears throat> Welcome in. Daddy Sheepdo. Spooky Calavera. John Ford. Random Doom and Invictus Lumpata. You guys are officially bubscribers. Hop in the tub, boys. Tub bub. Welcome, Rob. Yes. <laughs> You're going to have to talk to the boy. 
about the blade. Does he live still? I didn't know when I wasn't about to bring it up. It might have been a touchy subject, especially you seeming to recognize at least one of the heads that fell from the ceiling. Yes, he lives. And as far as interfering with the higher power at this point, even though I am on a path to try and becoming one, putting more trouble on, on us isn't something I'm willing to do. So at this point, we'll put our current issues on hold. But should I sense, even for a second, that you're trying to impede any of our progress or cause harm to anyone in this group. The one that you commonly know as Olheim is not the one who will come for you. You will see me as Helm and all his fury, and I will eradicate you until there's nothing left of your existence. She's just gonna smile and watch. Yeah, yeah. I'm not very scared of you, but I understand where you're coming from, and it'd be interesting to see this helm you mention in full power. I only know the old I know. I still don't you understand. Don't you're not... You're not undead, but you're not alive, and it's interesting to It's not something I can't explain. This is simply what I am now, and I accept it. Then can you accept that this is what I am now? I can accept what you are. That much has never bothered me. It's what you do with your actions that concern me. And I should say the same. You should go get some rest. It's getting late. Hmm. He continues burying the heads. I shall. Do I still need to sleep, Bub? I don't know. You do. <clears throat> okay. You do. I, I don't really know how demons work, but but uh, I mean, yeah. Technically, you you will still need rest, um, but there isn't one. There isn't really much of a resting spot. Out uh, in this current place, with an exception to Alheim and Jacob's doing, uh, but you will find court in this area. He seems to be weaving in and out of his sleep, quickly meandering back and forth uh, around the room with his eyes uh, before kind of dozing back out. He might say a, a few words here and there, but nothing... Coherent. Nothing that's super coherent or on the same topic from time to time. I'm just going to kind of stand in the doorway for a bit and watch him as he goes in and out of consciousness. And, uh, I don't plan on talking to him unless he notices me, but I'm just kind of watching to make sure he's okay because he's a little woozy right now. I prefer you not watch me like you watched your sister that you murdered. That'd be cool. It's okay, I had intent on killing her. <laughs> it's awful. At least with you, it'll be accidental. <laughs> True enough. Uh, of course, Just a bonus. You hear the door swing wide. It creaks and cracks on its pivot of the wall. And a figure moves in. With a feminine grace, you see Felsa swing inward. At her hip, the flashing stained steel of your master's blade. As you peer up to the face of the figure, you get tracer image of the sword in your vision before it finally seeks clarity. And you'll still see the demonic visage of Thelsa. Disregarding Thelsa, because I know all of them have special eyes, does it look just like a normal warped sword to me? I mean, it's never really looked like a, a, a warp sword, okay? You you still see 
what it was, right? Like you're looking at when, the, I, when I say when I say warped, I mean Keyblade. Definitely, definitely, and I I know I know what you're talking about. The thing is, yeah. even in its destroyed state, mm -hmm. it's still very much your master's blade, despite the actions that she yeah. took. It is still your master sword. It's it's one of those the the way I'm seeing it is. When they look at the sword, they see red aura glowing outline. When I look at the sword, it looks like a sword. Just I don't me. No one else is seeing it. Just like you? That. Yeah. Okay. Um, seeing as I'm weaving in and out of consciousness, um, Quartz going to try to lift his arm, which I'm assuming is at his side, right? Yes. Uh, would I have enough energy to actually get it up, or am I pretty much just fatigued and out of it. Give me fortitude save. Sure. Just realized I can't even see any other rolls because I'm on the fucking witch chat right now. <laughs> yeah, I've been doing the same. Yeah, you, uh... You are capable. I set the DC at 15. You're able to shift your arm upward and just touch the end of the flashing blade. Uh, basically trying to clench my hand around it. You can't seem to get enough of the material in your hand, but it's not... It's not going to stop you from trying. You manage to grab onto the, the, the robe of Thelsa just below the weapon itself. I want my weapon... And he's going to try to, like, pull. I don't know how much strength I necessarily have. I, at this point, I'm still not even, uh, like, assured that she's there. Right. I might just be batshit insane. That's um, up. but he's... Yeah. QC Court outstretch his arm with every fiber of his being shaking. You can see that... He's ran himself ragged. You don't know what he was doing. This is probably the worst off that you've seen him up to this point. But he's exhausted. With what little he has left inside of him, he reaches up and just touches the tip of the blade before he grabs onto your robe. Why do you want this blade so bad? It's... Only a blade. And a broken one at that. Court. Give me a fortitude save. Sure. Court. You're struggling. You see that the traces are growing a bit more wildly at this point. You're getting black spots in your vision. You feel yourself starting to slide back into unconsciousness. I'll give you ten words. Fuck. <laughs> um. Court says fuck. Yeah, he, Nine more to go. He just says fuck. Does he say it ten times though? Fuck, 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 fuck. Blacks out. Um. I needed to make my master proud. Please. As he kind of reaches with the last bit of strength. He's got nine words. <laughs> Ten. There you go. <laughs> Jesus. Fuck. Actually, wait. Instead of fuck, can it? Just, can the last noise just be inserted? Wilhelm scream. No. Damn. No. You're forbidden from braining <laughs> ever again. <laughs> Turns out he only had seven words. <laughs> well, as he says this. His voice seemingly trailing off. He doesn't really seem to get the last bit out, but you can tell it's not for lack of trying. 
before his eyes close, but what remains is his fingers clutched onto the cloth of your robe. His jaw falls slack, but the muscles never quite release on the arm. I'm going to kind of, uh, like, uncrimp his fingers like you would someone dead from an object. And uh, just kind of put his arm over his chest. <laughs> For <too>. fucking shame. <laughs> I'm deciding on what my modly duties are. <laughs> Don't worry. You deserve that one. I took care of it. You can't send suggested material through a stream like that. You can't, man. It's definitely yeah. a TOS thing. Okay. <laughs> You're such a fucking dork. Just an update there. I'm sure that some mods would probably let that slide if they were for Twitch staff, but I know that there are others that would not. Fair enough. And also, you should be ashamed. Yes. Yes, but that's... That's not new. <laughs> Thelsa, do you have anything to say to court? Or do you just unclench his fingers and walk away? Um, as I put his hand back down on his chest, I'm going to say, you don't want it anymore. I'm going to okay. walk away. I don't know. He's probably not going to hear it, but... No. I'm going to stab you with a rusty spoon. I'm going to stab you with your master's sword. Then what? <laughs> <laughs> stab you with my bigger sword. Oh, uh, well, you know. Spoon. Oh my god. The rusty spoon is for the tetanus. The bigger sword's for the cut. Yeah, I don't, I'm not worried about tetanus, really. <laughs> I'll be uh, real with you. Are we doing a, Are we doing a, another like time skip? Because there was a couple of things I wanted to do. Hit me with what you got. Four weeks. And um, I wanted to make a white and a white robe with gold trim uh, for Dugo Brass. You wanted to make a white robe with white gold and... trim. Yeah, like gold fabric, not like actual gold. Um, okay. Um, I'm curious. You don't have these materials, nor are you immediately proficient in crafting clothing. I wanted to have. I'm sorry. I, let me reword. I wanted to have one made for him. Okay. All right. Let's just make that happen then. I'm assuming that the rest of you guys take the night to establish whatever it is that you need to. You consistently wake up to look over at Thelsa, napping like a baby. Court still squeamishly throwing his hands outward, trying to do or say anything. But Court, you'll get a full night's rest. Everyone else will as well. Olheim, you do not need to sleep. We're going to shift it over to our Heatherton track. <laughs> My sword accidentally fall onto Thelsa's neck while we sleep. That's actually... So that it's, that's not how... I mean, unless she's sleeping like a bat, I don't see how <laughs> gravity is going to work in that favor. Well, let's just say someone walks up and puts the sword on the, you know, on the hilt and then just kind of drops it. Alright, this happens. I, I definitely sleep with my neck extended to <laughs> at all times. I sleep like this. And folded to your waist. When, yeah, yeah. When he tosses yeah. and turns, he gets up, stands, and just pivots hard onto his fucking neck. He just like, he's like, he's like, huh? <laughs> and it just falls back to sleep. Because that's, that's normal, you know? I also don't know how you keep your sword, but typically they're left flat and not like... Not yeah, standing upright. Like yeah. the... <laughs> no, it's just like, like the a, hilt. Yeah, it's, it's just a capital L, so you just swing yeah. in, just burp! Just bean yourself right there. Actually, sleepwalking, and I somehow managed to. Uh, <laughs> you step on it, uh, and it's like a Looney Tunes rig, and it just. That's yeah, I think it it's it's sort of like uh, South Park, the Canadians, the way that they 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 laugh and fart. <laughs> the, you know, they're fucking like hip, just yeah. just folds. Yeah. 
Uh, for the rope, how much did you want me to take out for materials to purchase? I, I feel like I've got to ask you this here. Um, yes. You, are you looking to get something that's just a temporary thing? Are you are you looking for masterwork? You realize that he has the element of flame. You um, it's help, help me understand thing. what you're trying to make. So it's it's essentially a ceremonial robe, okay. a robe for him. Uh, given what's going to happen, I want to give him something to wear on his last day. Okay, all right. So you wish to make a ceremonial robe uh, of gold and white yeah white uh white robe with uh gold trim okay gold or topaz trim well it's not going to be super challenging wear my color to find that and i'll do an extra thousand gold for a uh, fire protection enchant just so it doesn't burn when he wears it that is definitely something that you'll have to have happen with an enchanter uh, but that's that's fair. They would they would be able to do that for you. I, I like how you're like. I'm gonna bury. I'm gonna, I'm gonna kill you, but I'm gonna bury you in this thing that I just had made for you. Hope that's okay with you. But you have no idea. What do you even do with that from this point forward? You know, once he once he's dead, are you just gonna bury him in it? Do you think he dies like everybody else? I mean, if not, if he like if his body dissipates, um, like a fire elemental would after they're dead then it would be folded and buried as though he was still wearing it. Okay. It's, it, it's not a it's not a repeat use like, oh, in, in case another fire giant comes along, guys, and we gotta fucking execute him, I got one in the back. Don't worry. Like, it's... All it's right. a horrible... Yeah, it's a horrible mindset to, to have. <laughs> Just in case we get another friend. And of course, and there's you... poor Jacob, like, you're spending a thousand bucks on a death shroud? I'm covered in blood, man. Wash your ass, bro. <laughs> I've got stools in my blood. Okay. But, uh, yeah. Um, it would be like a thousand... One fifty? Yeah. Um, yeah. The robe itself isn't going to be very expensive. Um, but you'll probably get some bizarre looks because you're... You want something that's significantly larger. Um, and the enchantment itself isn't like... You don't get double the enchantment because of the size of it. It's just a one enchant fits all sort of situation. Yeah. So yeah, Sasha will be able to help you. Um, is there anything that you wanted to say to Sasha or to Charlie, or are you just going in for, for the basic, uh, basic premise? Um, outside of that, I mean, as a matter of fact, yes. Okay. Uh, as we're. Uh... As I'm handling that business, uh, I'll bring up the vampire children once again. So, with the work that I'm, well, that we are having done with the bathhouse, there is still an issue of the undead that lurk beneath. And I'm trying to find a way to be rid of them. At least the most effective way to be rid of them. Would you happen to have anything powerful enough to eradicate undead like that who are you speaking to Charlie or Sasha Sasha she ponders your question for a few moments before she says fire fire is among the fastest ways that I've seen it's messy but it's efficient Unless, of course, you happen to have a druid on hand, fairly well trained. A druid could quickly unbind them. It's the undead, of course. They're against the tenets of nature. And druids have learned their ways. I could think of a few, but they are not close to this place. How many did you say there were? Hundreds. Hundreds? Well... You'll need an army. Unless you can find a particular druid's grove that is deft and understand learned enough to unbind them from the coil of which we stand upon. Or you happen to have an army of flame-wielding warriors, I believe that you are in a pickle. The 
up here, so... They won't be stepping foot here. They cannot walk through these doors. I assumed as much. And if any of them are bold enough to try, well, they will... They will be taken care of. I understand. I think I know who I need to talk to. If an army is what I need. Do you? Well... An army um, of what? Thank... Abled body soldiers. Possibly welding fire. Or... In this case, possibly ice. Ice? You realize ice will have no impact. You will most assuredly freeze them. You may break their limbs. You may crush their spirit, but unless they are cast Burn. upon by holy flame, they pull themselves back together. Well, I have divine energy to at least remedy some of them. It sounds like you can remedy a small problem, but if there are truly hundreds of them, you may need more assistance. Ooh, I know. Why don't you speak to that that girthy boy, the flame wielder, the blacksmith attached to um, the old bathhouse? Yes, that one. I'll do that. Fire runs in his veins. Maybe you can find his family. I'll do that. Thank you. She nods. She collects her coin and then yeah. allows you to uh, to leave. Charlie I'll offers offers for dancing lessons and uh, to be your personal masseuse. He says you look very kinked up and he can work on some things for you. As he says that, Olheim like, takes his neck and goes and then like pops all his joints and goes I'm fine, thank you. And just like bows and walks out. His lips kind of curl, and he's like, oh, oh. Uh, I will make my way over to the encampment of the orcs. As you're on your way out, he's like, biting onto his knuckle, like, oh. He's looking at you like cut a... Cut my hand off. Fucking a piece like, of candy. Cut my hand off, I'm a lens <laughs> <new> hand. <laughs> no, I put it back. <laughs> okay, I figured as much. But uh, yeah, I'll make my way to the, the camp of the, the Blue Duke. Okay. On your own. Blue Dukums, as they call them in the, in the low quarter. They actually call them Nukem Dukum. Blue Doo Doo, the new. All right. You. Count Blue Coo. You. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Blue Duke Cabin. Let's, uh, let's head over there. The Nukem Dukum. <laughs> you, you know where that, where they're stationed. You realize that there is. A half orc encampment that stays inside of Cauldron. Um, courtesy of some events that happened uh, on Obsidian Avenue, it's in the southeastern quarter. There is an area that has been sequestered off for the entire encampment. Um, you know where to locate them. Yep. Because I've been there before. Okay. And as I hobble up to the gate. Yeah, just like that. Can you do that yeah. for me again? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Power, that's that's a Heinz power walk. He's all. <laughs> but uh, yeah, as he uh, as he walks up, he will he will give a bow to the the guards at if there are any guards at the the encampment gate. Sure, I'm gonna try some sounds here so I can figure out what I've got. He's all swarm of spiders comes out of nowhere. Okay. Okay. Um, you will find in the Blue Duke's camp that there are many men. Uh, lots of, lots of half orcs that seem to be training. Some of them are lounging around. This is uh, mostly an area that is avoided by the common folk. They they find a way for or any reason to stay away from this area. They're 
you're, you're not shy of seeing that this town holds some particular form of racism against the half-orcs. On top of the fact that they weren't welcome here to begin with. The locals are not fans. But you find your way in, which is precarious to some of them, if you watch keenly. Some knock over bits of log or tender. A few of them stop sparring with each other as they kind of watch you wade in before you find yourself uh, upon one that seems to be holding a ledger of sorts. Um, this large book that seems to have moved up around their waist. And it's got a tether that cords around the back of their neck um, so that they can continue walking while this holds. Um, it's a series of glasses that are basically corded up around the, uh, the eyes as well. Uh, it's very strange for you. It's not often that you see a, a half-orc that has, one, uh, learned enough to read, so they have literacy, but two, they wear glasses. Do you say anything to them? To this particular uh, yeah. half-orc? Uh, wave, I'll wave them down. Okay. Excuse me. Mm -hmm. I'm, uh, I'm looking for the Blue Duke. You have a meeting. No. What makes you think you can, you can speak to the Duke? It's a rather urgent matter. Someone send you. Myself. He looks around for a moment, peers behind you. Why? To help quell an issue of mass undead beneath the city. I need to talk to him about that. Mass undead? I ain't heard nothing about it. Do you speak for the Blue Duke? No, no, I speak not for the Duke. But I'm his records keeper. The only one in this camp that can read. And only ones that can write. Are you daft? Is someone put you up to this? Do I look like I'm here to play games? You look like you stumbled into the wrong tavern, mate. You might be in the wrong place. But, you've got my interest. I ain't no one else to be wandering in here. None of them seem to be too kind on us. So, come on. This will be interesting. I'll take you to see the Duke. Gives him a bow. Thank you. He moves. Um, he's got some kind of swing in his hip. Uh, he does not bear a weapon the same as the others, but his build is no less um, turgid than any other fighter here. He does not don the same kind of breastplate as the rest of the guard. He wears leathers. He may have something to defend himself, but you see that the way that he walks, he was either struck down in battle, or he may have been born lame. You're not entirely sure of the situation. So he moves. Come this way. I don't mind it, guys. Don't mind the stairs. He moves up to the, the prime tent. This is where you had stumbled into the Blue, du Blue Duke's private quarters. He pauses briefly for a moment. You ain't supposing that you'd be drawing a, a weapons on him. Kind of puts his hands up. Generally pretty private when it comes to his personal tent. And if you do so, well, it's a your ass and mine as well. I happen to like my ass. You're free to search me if you... It'll what? put you at ease. I have no weapons on me. You don't have nothing, no, because all I can see... You a casting type? You got magics running through your veins. Divine. Divine? What gods do you pray, Dwarf Man? None that you would know of at the moment. But soon. Not one of them bad gods, I suppose. No. Alright. What languages do you speak, Alheim? Speak Mandarin, 
Mandarin. No. <laughs> uh, it's you really far in a... Dwarf, Common, Undercommon, and Celestial. Okay. Uh, he moves up to the, the tent, and he opens up the first flap, and he starts speaking in Orc. When he does so, he waits. There is a guttural response back. You can't really make much of it, but it's much deeper. Uh, louder. You know, how, uh, how bassy voices can carry. And that's the situation. It carries back. I'll uh, cast tongues on myself. As you cast tongues, I need you to roll a d1000. I didn't think that this was going to happen. Being honest, I didn't think that this was going to come up, but... It's going to be like Fireball. This is from Aurora416. This is their wild magic of the month. Just as Aurora goes to mute. Yep. Okay. You said 132? Fire Typhoon. The least offensive spell you could get. Uh, You're hated by an orc leader. <laughs> that would be so good. That's no, the that's one I got. Suddenly, anyone who's part orc hates you. Not quite. 132. Weapon. You find yourself suddenly equipped with an old familiar scythe. Oh! I, don't, I never had a scythe. I don't know which version it is. No, you didn't have a scythe, but one of our party did. Someone did some time ago. No one really knows who he is. Real, so real you, underground character. He has Sakata's scythe. The uh, Does he have... It's, is it... Is it apathy's razor? That's that is. It's literally what I just what what I just posted. I'm not sure if you guys can see that or not. My chat's being buggy. Yeah, no, we we can. Oh, oh! It just says you find yourself equipped with an old familiar scythe. Yeah, that's like that's what it is. It's literally one thirty. So wow. it's not him being. It's not Sakata's scythe. It's just it's literally just. A He's old just scythe. like, junk. This is my granddad's scythe. Oh, <laughs> he's gonna be pissed. As that happens. Uh... Olheim taps the orc on the shoulder. <laughs> What's this? now? This this is uh this is actually the kicker. Um, as you begin to cast the spell, he stops speaking, and the half orc walks away from you. The flap is held open. He turns his back, okay. and the weapon is equipped to your person. It is placed upon your back. You feel I'm the weight turned. of it. Yeah, just turn around and kind of look it in, just put it off to the side. You see a war-torn blade. A ragged scythe clings to your back. What, what kind of... What? Uh, and he, yeah, he'll just place it off to the side. He's, he's just, no reason to hold just on to drop it. it? Yeah, he's, he has no reason to lie. Every, every time he takes it off, it just pops shit? back onto his back. Yeah, he just, like, he just, like, goes... <laughs> walks inside. He's just no, like... no, it's got returning on it, so every time he throws it away, it comes right to his back. You, you're you like, what the hell is this? And you drop it on the ground. As you're walking into the tent, the camera's watching you. A half-orc walks by and he's like, oh! Grabs it, and he's got a new sight. <laughs> Good sight! Fucking bubbles, though, or comes out. Yeah, but yeah. He uh, officially <laughs> given someone a, That's a good sign, quite dude. a fine weapon, actually. So, sure enough, as the the weapon is collected by half orc because you couldn't be bothered with the scythe on your back, <laughs> you find yourself in the tent of a figure, of a different persuasion. I don't know what this is going to sound like, but we're going to try to play it to see if this has any flavor. MVG, I'm going to be super pissed off if that turns out to be the case. That this was like our it, first it plus was. five weapon. 
It wasn't a plus five weapon. No, it was it definitely a Vorpal Scythe. It was not a Vorpal Scythe. That's a plus five weapon. <laughs> <laughs> okay. You begin to wander in Ulheim into the tent of the Blue Duke, and mm -hmm. you're very familiar with this location. You find the medium-sized humanoid sitting behind a table. He seems to be lording over what looks to be um, a novel of sorts, uh, a tome. As he flips the page, you hear the the, the like the, the the loud flip yeah. as each page keeps moving rapidly. So, before finally he slams his hand down, and he continues to look. He draws from a, a long pipe that sits on the left side of the table. His hand outstretches, and it seems to almost go further than the typical half orcs. And he takes a long draw off of his pipe. You see smoke kind of rise up above his head. His back is turned to you. I'm assuming he notices I'm there, but I'll wait till he's uh, finished with what he's doing before uh, I say anything. I'll let him speak first. The half-orc wears an armor that you were unfamiliar with. You haven't seen anything like this, not even in the sands of the Osirian Desert. It looks strong. Very strong. It's something that is a bit more akin to a carapace. But it seems to move freely. It seems to rapidly tighten up when he shifts, but it moves with his body like it's meant to fit. You're not sure if it's a property, but it could be magical. Something that would be far more akin to be fitted on a caster of sorts, which... You have seen him cast spells. Very powerful magic at that. He turns to you, still holding on to this, and when he sees you, he kind of takes his hand outward, his right hand, and he drops a quill into an ink vial. You needed something. Possible assistance if you have the time or the willingness. I've seen you. Yes. You hear the draw in his lower jaw as it seems to jut outward. Which you're not actually sure if that's deliberate or not, knowing what he looks like beneath this guy's. Mm -hmm. I know you. I've seen you. You're with. You're with the flurry, are you not? I believe so. That's what they still call themselves, yes. You still live. Either they've all died, or they've changed their rules. What do you want? Do you know about the issue in the underbelly of the city? If I did... Just need to know if you do. Why? Why does it matter now? I need assistance quelling this threat of vampires. It's not a threat. A threat is on the surface. Alheim, you get a very bizarre feeling. You get that sense that something here is beyond your sense. Something here is foreign to you. Something is strange. There are more eyes on you than you're aware. I... Sensing that, I will uh, put my hand up, and as I snap, I cast Invisibility Purge. 
When you cast Invisibility Purge, your fingers will rescind and they snap as such. And for a moment, there is a shimmer in the room. But it has no immediate effect. The Blue Duke stands. First, I thought you were crazy, wild, and untrained. Now you've come not only into the Half Orcs camp, but into my tent. Their leader. And you try aberrant magics. I come to speak plainly with a person. I don't like having prying eyes on me that I'm not aware of. There are no eyes here. Nothing. Nothing that you should be concerned of. And he points to where the, sh the shimmer... Uh, he, he would see where the shimmer was at, right? It's not there anymore, but yes, you did see it. And the shimmering in the corner. See nothing there. Then someone was spying on you then. Give me a sense motive. Did it cast? You can tell he's lying. You know when you're being lied to, Olheim. Yeah. I don't know why I rolled again. It's fine. But, yeah. I'm not being spied on. There's nothing here. Nothing to warrant your concern. As far as a threat beneath the city. It's not a threat to the city until it shows its face. And as of now, I have many other things to deal with than something that lurks in the cold dark. There are already enough boogeymen who've revealed themselves. Your... your words... I generally did come to ask for your help, and you stand there lying to me. Lying? I have nothing to gain from lying to you. Even now, you hide your visage from me. I don't know what you're talking about. His eye kind of jarringly peers around the room. And then quickly back to you. So you've come to ask for my help. And you wish to call a bluff. Yet you have no proof. What arm have I brought to you? What arm have I brought to yours? None, at least to my knowledge. But in spite of what you are, or at least what you hide, I believe that you and your people can do some good, in spite of what the town thinks of you. We've been doing good since the moment we walked into this place. It was barely holding itself together. It's a mess. Evil. Evil still runs through these streets. And how am I not so sure that evil's not standing in my tent right now? Am I supposed to take your word, stranger? You haven't introduced yourself. You've admitted to traveling with the Fleury, who are naturally villainous, though they claim that they are doing good. 
I've seen the mess they've left behind, the bodies that mount up in their wake. Yet we, the half-orc, we're villains. They spit at us when we walk through these streets. They holler, yell, cast us out. But they need us. No one else is going to fight their fight. No one else. We're paid. Not well enough. Agreed. You aren't paid well enough. Your accountant could use some work. Work! Work! We were given 20 logs and linen. Linen! We weren't given rope, hide or have support. Nothing. This will not do. My he kind of looks at him. Spin. He puts his hand up. Okay. And tosses him a thousand gold. Tosses him the last of it. I need. He opens the bag. Remember, it's a, a thousand yeah. gold. Yeah. Fifty coins is a pound. So you've just literally tossed this guy uh, like a ten, eleven pound bag. Yeah. He kind of opens the bag, which is sizable at this point. His hand kind of rifles through. He leans back in his chair, takes another long drag. So you have gone. We just simply bought by another soda. What? I'm not asking to pay for your services in that regard. What your is this then? There could, your people out there could use help. Reparations. You feel bad for us. Am I not allowed to? We don't need your sympathies. They'll be happy that the next round's on you. But this, this is only a start. We're not allowed in business, in establishments, unless we have a coin purse that's bursting. What do you do about the people? The people of this town? This haggard lot that wishes nothing more than to judge us at every corner. We have families. We have children alike. And they're not allowed in this town. Then at the very least, stand by me with this one favor. Quell one threat. Help me quell one threat. Me and you, we tell the people who's done this. And if I've we do... If we succeed in this threat that lurks beneath the city, as you've said, what then, what proof will we have? Because I've killed a vampire before, and they don't remain dead unless you burn them to ashes. So if we hand them, what, a bowl? We hand them a, a bag, many sacks, if you will, a barrel, even, of ashes. They're just supposed to... Take it for face value. Believe that we have quelled a threat that is unbeknownst to them. You see where I'm coming from. I wish not to have quarrel with you, dwarf. I just wish for you to see that they will not back any of this until they realize that it's a threat. That it's a threat to them, to the livelihood, and to their children. Then if you help me with this, I can help you with the task. The bathhouse is going to be our new guild hall. We get that built up, I can help get your men supplied better. Change the image. It's not something that should be proud of happening, but giving them something 
much something more appealing to wear than what they have now. It's Shug. a slight change from there. Just let me finish. That's racist. We start working together. At the very least, if they can see that if we pull our resources and we are doing some good, we can at the very least change their minds. Even something as small as charity work. Oh, hun, give me a diplomacy. Up. Twenty-two. You can see he's listening. He's not exactly chomping at the bit, but he's listening. Yeah. I'm not saying all of this will be done in a day. And hell, I know it won't be. I'm al I already get ridiculed and laughed at. Eyes with scorn because I'm helping a friend who just happens to have the blood of a demon in him. I know. I know who you speak of. I've seen him. Say that we do follow through with your needs. Say that I can convince my men to work with this guild house. You have enough arms, armaments for 200 plus half orcs. You have enough coin and work for 200 or more men because there are that many of them and you'll cause infighting if they are offered a better deal. They'll wage an inner war, of which your coin will not be enough. I would love to speak to them, and this kind of shakes the bag. This is a great start, but you'll need enough supplies for 200 half-orc men, fighters, back-alley brawlers, barbarous type. You'll need the arms, the armaments, and the work. If you lack it, I will not tell them hide or hair of your offer. Your own people in the city are fighting. Why would I tell my men to cause them to fight? Their blood will not be as waged in these streets to appease those that care not for them. You must understand my position. I do. But if you truly want to make this place your home, then at the very least you should see it worth fighting for. You opened my eyes. Much love. You certainly have opened my eyes to opportunity. But this opportunity must be fair enough for all. Or... It's with shite. He, uh, Ulhan pulls out the, the papers that he has for the work orders for the guild house. This is another thousand gold for work orders. You wish to pay my men. These can be distributed to any company or laborers that I choose. This is done. It's another thousand in your pockets for them. He looks I'm, at them. My men are not caught rights. Carpenters. Laborers to deal with marble. Stone. No. You give them something to hack down. Their blood will boil and they'll chop it to bits. I wish that I could give them the employ that you desire. But you need a professional. Professionals. My men are not that. Some of them are very young still. They could learn. But it starts with the people. Mm. 
very well. There are a few that have control of the masses. There are a few that the masses listen to. And while he's not my favorite, Jared Skellering appears to be mostly a good man. Not as good as Tercion was. I regret bringing the man down, but it was requested of me. I wished to bring him to his knees and chain him to return. The machinations that happened in Red Gorge were strange. Were, were you aware of what happened? I've only heard tavern rumors, stories. From a first-hand account, that clergyman, the... I cannot remember his name. The one you sought in Red Gorge, the Paladin. Um, Tercival, I believe. Yes, Tercival. He came with a strength beyond my men, and Tercian came as well. They fought as they needed to. And when I believed that Tercian was making headway, something happened. Tercival fell in combat. And Skellering turned. I was in his guard. He turned on me eyes red with blazing fire. And you must understand that I could not look weak before my men. I understand. He turned his blade on me, but he was wounded from the fight. I struck him with magic, but I wish to not use basic, or anything more than basic. But he continued on. He shirked it off. As if it was nothing. I was forced to draw my weapon. And when I believed that I had dealt a fatal blow, he stopped moving. This is when Tercival, the paladin, stood. Delivering the final blow. The fire swept from his eyes back to Tercival. I believe that I am the undoing. But no one understood that day. There was something more there. Someone more. And I wish to understand and pay back that force. And they'll have their time. Can I get a perception, please, Alheim? Yes. 32. You faintly see it. The shimmer, that the, the area where the shimmer was at, you see a figure briefly shift. It's not invisible, but you can make out the outline of a humanoid figure. However, the figure doesn't have legs. It looks like a torso, a head, 
and two long dragging arms. You can see completely through it. There is complete transparency. You just happen to see a shift in your surrounding. Mm. And this is in front of me? Like, like as I'm it's looking off. at him? I it's see. off over his shoulder. Uh, you just caught it. The DC was as, 30. Yeah, as I see it, I'll tell him. Uh, I'll shift over. There's something behind you. And, like, Olheim kind of clenches his fist. Where he's standing, he sidesteps in front of you, and he shakes his head. No, there's not. Nothing that concerns you. Just kind of put his hand down, then. Thank you for telling me what you have. I don't know if it's troubled you or not, but thank you for confiding within me. If you care for this town, you'll start with its people. You've done a good thing for me today, Dwarf. For me and mine. And this will go to use. I'll speak to Jared Skellerang. Knowing him, he will not have his guardsmen fight alongside yours. At the very least, I can see if he can <coughs> pass up some arm armaments to you for the coming battle. Where do you think our weapons come from? You think we are master crafters? We have excess amounts of steel lying around. These daughtry plates were given to us from the town. Some of them still have arrow holes. Then I will see to it that he outfits you better than what he already has. Best of luck. Scraps, Scraps will not do for your men. Best of luck. Gives him a nod. Um, he turns around, and as he does, he turns back. My name is Helm, by the way. That is the name, the name I go by now. He nods. And he goes back to his ledger, or whatever he seems to be working upon. Yeah. I'll uh, head towards the guardhouse, and if you want to segue to someone else. Yeah. Uh, it's, it's at this point that you realize when you step outside that that heavy feeling seems to fall. Uh, that uh, lurid stance that he gave you, constantly trying to shift your vision or gaze back to his, seems to have... Um, it, the, the, the entire suspenseful feeling just kind of shirks off of your shoulders, you know, like the weight has been lifted. Yeah. So it's either like a familiar of his, or it could be his actual form that he's, I guess, hiding or something like that, at least using magic in some yeah, way. Yeah, something akin to it. Yeah. But, I mean, he seemed, I mean, other than, I guess, the lie that he told about, uh, I guess, I guess, yeah, I mean, he already knows, I guess, the, he already knew of the, the threat that was going on below, but I guess not acknowledging it was... I mean, for multiple reasons, understood. right? Yeah, yeah. They I do mean, as they're told. Yeah. And until a a threat is seen on the surface, um, they, they can't... They have no reason to attack it. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Um, all, like, literally in the situation, being that they're big, strong, surly types that have a ton of history in the land, especially since most of the actively um, unarmored are, are slaves at this point. Yeah, it's, um, it sends them some flags. All it's going to take is is one noble woman or girl saying something, you know, having having a lie, saying anything at all. And they would uh, likely be put to death, you know, yeah. strung up. It would be very bad, very bad for them. So they don't say anything. They they try to stick to, to whatever it is that they, they're they told to do. Um, there are a few locations that they were seen at regularly, but they were more seedier locations like the Slippery Eel. However, the Slippery Eel went up uh, in flame. Yep. So. 
Um, I'm going to step away and grab something to drink. Uh, I'm going to give you guys an opportunity here to... Well, not technically berate the audience, but this is your opportunity here to speak with them or have uh, any Why answers or questions. Following? Yeah, that, oh, that you know we're going to berate them. That person watching us right now, why aren't you following? Yeah, yeah. that one person. I'm definitely going to turn on the BRB, though, because I imagine someone's going to do something wrong. I was going to I was gonna hope that we could just, all all of us just stare into our webcam nope. while you're gone. Nope. All right, I'm just going to assume somebody's going to do something wrong. Why do I feel like that was directed at me? 